This project has a name, it's called BTT Haiti for Vocational Technical Training Dash Haiti. They are in Haiti. There is a very serious shortage of skilled labor in Haiti. And so what we're looking to do is to um, try to remove some of the uh, extreme poverty by teaching some of the young people's skills so that they can get uh, jobs in the construction and electric power and in the tourism industries. When you uh, uh, bring uh, one person in the family up, you bring up everybody in the family because they don't have my money and your money, it's the family's money. So if we give a job, if we get one fellow a job, then we're probably helping 15 people get out of poverty. Initially, we're looking to uh, provide training in uh, uh, basic electricity. And I've talked to the local power company and um, they can take our students when they graduate and pair them up with their electricians as apprenticeships and then they'll finish the training their electricians will finish the training and then they'll end up with more electricians and the reason that the timing is good on this and that this is important is because right now the power company in Haiti is the national power company it serves five percent of Haiti and they've had a dictatorship until about last year and now they, uh, the new president has said, you know, we want the power company to service all 100% of Haiti. So now they're going to have to start finding all kinds of electricians. And uh, I can train them and have Haitian apprentices, uh, or they can hire their electricians from Cuba or the Dominican Republic, which just brings the money back to Cuba and it brings it back to the Dominican Republic and it really doesn't do too much to help Haiti. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to generate um, maybe like a middle class, which is something they really don't have there. When I was there in August, we uh, tested some potential students. So we have 15 students on our waiting list now for the first class. So when they came for testing, some of them walked for two days to get there because uh, an education is an opportunity there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that everybody knows they're lucky if they can get, you know. So it has a lot of value. And then um, to get the school set up is like $6,500 to set up a school, <laughs> which is really not that bad, okay. And then, uh, uh, we need to raise the 6500 then we need to go over there, and then the 6500 is so that we can buy equipment in Port-au-Prince, rather than buy it here, pay for the shipping, then pay for import duty taxes when we get it to Haiti, and, uh, and it looks like if we just go to Haiti and buy it, it's going to be probably 5% over what it costs here. You know? So it's actually cheaper to do it that way. And again, you're helping the economy in Haiti itself to grow a little bit. But uh, that's the next plan is to go get the stuff. We figured it'll take us about a week to finish up with the school. School's brand new, okay? And it's finished now. It's provided by Pastor St. Luke. He built it for a little kid's school, but he has a couple other ones, so then we're going to put uh, this post-secondary school in there instead. And he's making it available for that. So then we'll take our, our tables and our, our church tables and our folding chairs and our, our computer and printer and projector and, and uh, move into the school and have a caretaker in there to make sure our stuff doesn't go away. And, and wheel in our translator is is uh, doing pretty good with her English. When I talked to Whelan for her English lessons, I've given her a laptop. When the electricity's on, she plugs it in, charges it up, and then we can talk for two hours because her internet connection is, is via radio, the cell phone company. And so uh, I, half the time I can't see her because it's dark, okay, but we can still talk. And we can type on the keyboard, you know, if she 
she doesn't know what a word is, I can type it to her. And if I don't understand what she's trying to say, then she can type it to me and then I can tell her what the word sounds like and then she'll know what it is, you know. And uh, she's ready, pretty much. And um, so, take us a couple of days to put the school together. And then it'll take us uh, a couple of days to get the students back in there again. And uh, then we can start the fun. We'll teach four hours a day, basic electricity. And because the temperature is starting to get go up there now. And uh, this is the winter, it's a cool time. And it's fine for... For those folks, they don't mind it too much because they've been there all their life. But Edward melts when he gets into 102 degrees or 100 degrees, Edward starts to melt a bit. The dollar there, uh, there's like eight Haitian dollars to one U.S. dollar. So getting stuff done there, uh, if you're spending U.S. dollars, you got some power when you got U.S. dollars. Um, you can labor, for instance. Uh, if you pay somebody five dollars, five U.S. dollars a day, it's a good wage in the mountains, okay? Um, if you give them ten dollars a day, it's an even better wage. At ten dollars a day, you'll have people come on out of the woodwork who want jobs. You'll have a thousand people there. Twenty dollars a day or fifteen dollars a day, you'll have a mob scene. And there's so much traffic. People walk. And uh, people walk and people have... Uh, motorcycle taxi cabs and they have pickup truck taxi cabs and they have school bus taxi cabs okay so you've got all this stuff trying to get trying to be first down the highway and it's really something to look at it's best to ride in there with your eyes closed okay because <laughs> it's done right scary but uh, but it's getting better when I was there everybody was nice to me and everybody was friendly People got a little overzealous sometimes trying to sell me stuff, okay. But uh, Pastor St. Luke and his family usually had uh, people around me. Even when I said, let me go off, I'm going to go down here by myself, okay? Ah, sure. They always had spies in the audience, <laughs> you know, spies in the crowd, so if something happened. Then they'd let me stew there for a while to learn why I don't go off on my own, and then they'd come and drag me out of there, you know. And it wasn't that... It wasn't a, 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 a dangerous thing. It was people wanted to sell me stuff and I don't speak Creole. So I couldn't tell what they want. I knew I knew they wanted to sell me stuff, okay? But I couldn't tell them no. I don't wanna because no is not the Creole right Creole word, you know? And uh, so then there would be more people and more people and more people and pretty soon there'd be 30 people trying to sell me stuff and I'd be in the middle of this big crowd, okay? And then they'd have to come in and say, oh, wait, 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 he doesn't have an idea what you're trying to sell him, you know. We have our uh, capital campaign that starts in a couple days. And it's students helping students. And we're trying to work with colleges and high schools and universities and vocational technical schools. And we've got two sets of penny wars that we're putting together. One is for universities, okay, and post-secondaries, okay, and then another one is for high schools, and that won't start for a while yet, but we're hoping to get uh, schools from around the country to come in and participate, and then uh, there will be a trophy that will go to the winning high school, and a trophy that will go to the, to the winning uh, college or university, and then that will move every year, so the first trick is to win it, okay, then the second trick is to keep it, okay? <laughs> you know? So it should be a lot of fun for everybody. And uh, the idea is to put pennies in the jar, or in this big five-gallon uh, water cooler jug. And then uh, every penny you put in there is worth a point. Any silver or anything other than a penny, like a, a dollar bill, subtracts 100 pennies. A quarter subtracts 25. And, Nickel subtracts five and a dime, you know, and so on and so on. If it isn't a penny, it subtracts. If somebody puts a check in there, that subtracts, okay? And uh, then we're going by points. The winners by points, not by, uh, not by how much funds they raise, but by points, okay? And uh, then uh, if you can't get to the jar and you're an alumni or something like this, you know, 
then you can go online and you can go look at the scores of everybody and then you can go and say add to the jug okay click on add to the jug and then you can decide if you want to use your credit card to buy more pennies for the jug or you want to buy non-pennies you know or you want to subtract pennies from the jug okay then you can use your your uh, credit card to, to help boost it so the alumni can get involved and and uh, the parents of the students can get involved and, and it's all going for a good cause so uh, hopefully there'll be enough pennies to where we can do that. We'll build a school one penny at a time if we have to. <laughs> It'll take us probably a week maybe to get the school up and running. Maybe it would just take four days. Okay. Um, then a couple of days to get the students back over there again and uh, then I'll teach the first class. That'll take about three or four months and then uh, it'll be starting to get pretty hot and then if I have students that are up to the task and then I, mate, I might uh, put the students in charge of teaching the next class and then uh, monitor what they're doing from up here on our internet TV. Well NASEC as uh, the, the acronym stands for North American Center for Emergency Communications. Okay, hey, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. Been around for 20 years this year. Okay, and um, we've helped about a million people directly or indirectly so far. Well, we've been watching what's going on in Haiti ever since uh, the uh, January 2010 uh, earthquake that killed about 300,000 people. And we've been watching, well, why, why, uh, why are they using technical staff from, you know, skilled labor from these other countries? That can't be good, okay? So then I, I told uh, um, uh, Donna Roddy from Zero Life Christian Center up in Angora, who talks to Pastor St. Luke a lot, I said, why don't we... Uh, why don't you teach them a, a trade? Then they can get a job, and then they can start having an income, and they can, you know, start changing this poverty situation. And then the next morning, and she thought, oh, I'll find out. The next morning, Pastor St. Luke called me from Haiti, and I know him, okay, and he said, why don't you, why don't you come over here? This is a really good idea, okay? And then when I got there, here's a school for you, a building. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And they wanted to know who was going to teach it. And then of course, well, I was a Votec teacher, okay, so I said, I'll teach it. I used to teach electronics and, and electricity and mathematics and uh, tech writing. And so uh, we'll, uh, we'll teach it. And uh, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much what happened. And so, so now I'm working on a school in Haiti, okay? And NASEC has changed or has expanded its mission to where now it is uh, emergency communications consulting and uh, educational services. And uh, this is to help pull these people out of poverty. And it's not a very big expense, you know? And uh, once you buy the stuff, you'll be able to use it over and over and over and over and over again. So it's, you should be able to get a pretty good bang for our buck over there. It's just to try to find enough people to help get behind what I'm doing and to help get me over there so that I can do what needs to be done. And this little thing, okay, it doesn't cost a whole heck of a lot, but it's kind of running on the philosophy, education is critical. So here's what you got, okay. You can give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. Teach him to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. So, it's kind of like that.